It's saying if this is true, so we can say what type of angle relationship it is, but then which lines would be parallel. And so this diagram isn't necessarily drawn showing lines parallel, but if we knew one of these were true, then we could say the lines are parallel. It doesn't really matter if the diagram is drawn like that L and N are obviously don't look parallel, but if one of these things are true, maybe we could say that they are. Um, or the other lines that we could look at. So L and N, we could be looking here. Um, and the other lines that we could be looking at would be J and K. Would the angle relationship be saying that those two are parallel? So given one and eight, let me use my pencil. What type of angle relationship do one and eight have? Let me flip it around. What are they? They are alternate interior angles. So one and eight here and here are alternate interior angles. For which line? So which lines then would be parallel? It's a trickier question than what we asked yesterday. K and J, exactly. So one and eight are on this transversal here. One is connected to J, eight is connected to K. So if I knew that one and eight were congruent, which these are alternate um, interior angles, if I knew that, then I would know, like if I wrote it as an if then, if those are congruent, then uh, J, is parallel to K, okay? Those are the lines that would be parallel given that those angles are congruent, okay? Um, I'm gonna skip this one for a minute. Let's go down to uh, three and four. So three and I'm four, oh, hey, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, don't look so depressed, people. It's not that bad. I mean, last semester I had a whole prep block in the morning and I had to put no. this sort of like almost by myself for a whole. So you guys, you know, you don't have it that bad. You have each other at least. What he's saying is he misses hanging out with me during block one. Did you just say that out loud? That's what he was saying. <laughs> a more weeks I'm going to be off during block one. Again. See? Love well, that quality time back. <laughs> Um, so the next one says three and four. It does not say that they're congruent. It says they're equal to 180 or they're supplementary. Again, you may need to tilt it. What type of angles are three and four? Same side, same side interior. These are same side interior angles. And it's good that they're supplementary because that's what we want, same side supplementary. And that makes what lines parallel? <clears throat> J and K. Three is connected to J, four is connected to K. So those are the lines we're looking at, J parallel to K. Then we get to four and six. So let me erase three here. What type of angle relationship do four and six have? Vertical, like that. Chelsea, why do we not actually, why don't we like vertical angles? Right, so four and six are vertical angles. Doesn't prove that anything's uh, parallel. This would just be none. There's no lines. Knowing that four and six are congruent to each other does not allow us to say any lines are parallel. Okay, it's just their vertical angles. 10 and seven. Here's 10 and seven. Sorry, I'm now I'm going out of order. I'm going this way. 10 and seven may need to flip it around. Corresponding, so those are on the same side of this line, but one's inside, one's outside. That's when it's corresponding. And if corresponding angles are congruent, then our lines are parallel. What lines are parallel? 10 is connected to? And seven is connected to? K, so J and K. These are corresponding angles and J and K are parallel. Five and three. Five and three are what type of angles? Corresponding again. And again, J and K. Corresponding angles, J parallel to K. Six and seven are equal. Six and seven are equal. What type of angles are six and seven? 
same side interior angles. Do we use same side interior angles as congruent pairs? No, they're supplementary. So knowing that six and seven are congruent does not tell us that lines are parallel. If we knew that they were congruent and one of them was a right angle, then we'd know that we'd have 180 between the two of them and we could say that they are parallel, but just knowing they're congruent, nothing. If we had angle six plus angle seven equals 180, if that was true, then we could say, and that would be L and N. Now L and N don't look parallel, but I'm saying if that was what was given to us instead of congruent, then we could say they are parallel, but this is not allowed to say parallel. Okay. Same, uh, same game down here. So we have a different diagram, a little tricky. Said yesterday, you may want to extend the extend lines here so you can see the parallel lines a little bit better. <clears throat> here, we could be looking that N and P are parallel or NO and SP are parallel, or we could be looking that OR and TS. So notice that the way those lines are labeled are just a little different. They're not labeled with little cursive letters or lowercase letters like up above. They just have points on them. So the way that we're going to list our lines is going to be a little different. <laughs> so where's my pencil? One and three. One and three are what type of angles? Those are corresponding angles. And they're corresponding angles that are connected to which two lines? N and P. Now, again, those aren't actually like line N, line P. This is a point N. So we need to call this line O N. And this line, where's my other point S P? Okay, so that tells me that O N is parallel to S P. Okay, those are different. They're listing segments with some points instead of lines with little lowercase letters. <clears throat> Four and one, alternate interior, yeah. Alternate interior. And again, it tells us that this line is parallel to this line, right? The, the yellow lines are parallel. They're, this is connected to this line or is connected to this line. So it's again, ON parallel to SP. Two and five, flipping it around. Two and five are what type of angles? Corresponding around the yellow or the red? The red, yeah, corresponding angles with these red lines, which would be OR and TS. A different pair of lines being parallel there. We were looking yellow originally, now we're red. Five and three. Do five and three have any relationship? Hmm? No, they're alternate, but they're alternate like one out, one in, and that's not a thing. So these are just, you'll see this word on your um, quiz tomorrow, unrelated angles, okay? Or they have, they have no special relationship. They're not alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding same side interior, same side exterior. They're not one of those. They are unrelated angles. So none, there's no parallel lines that we can say um, we have there, but it's a different relationship, okay? Then it says four and five. So looking right here is supplementary. What, are, what relationship do four and five have? Same side interior. Good that they're supplementary. And it tells me that which two lines are parallel? Red or yellow, I'll make it easier. Red, yeah. OR parallel to TS. Okay, so a little bit trickier than what we were looking at yesterday, but same idea. Good. Uh, then it moved to that solving stuff. Okay, do we feel okay about this page? And I got a, I got a couple of emails. Oh yeah, the proof isn't there. That's what yeah. you were saying? Yeah. yeah, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have it written in on this one. So we'll do it. Well, <laughs> I got a couple of and I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll, we'll do it together. Okay, 
Um, so on the solving up above, there's kind of two different strategies you can use to solve. On the second one, where I'm given an angle, then I may just fill in the other angles because I can. If I have one, I know all the others. On the first and the third example, I'm not given an angle measurement per se, I'm just given a relationship. So what relationship do these angles have? They are, they are alternate interior. And I've said several times, I don't know where my packet is, that the absolute best page of notes that you have to help you tomorrow, this is definitely not this semester's notes, that's okay is this page, okay? So I look at this and I go, okay, those are alternate interior angles. They're either congruent or supplementary. And I just look to see which column they're in. Alternate interior angles are congruent. And it even says above it, that means we set them equal to each other, okay? And if it was a supplementary, it even says above it what that setup is for an equation, okay? So use this chart to help you. It is so silly to me when you take an open notes quiz and like leave something blank. Or like, don't even, if, don't even, like I can tell you didn't even look at your notes because you just set everything equal to each other and you didn't even compare, you know, it to your notes in terms of what the relationships are. Okay, take the time to have your notes pack it out. Make sure you're doing the right thing. These are congruent. And even said that the setup is set them equal to each other. So set them equal to each other. And now I'm just solving. So maybe I subtract three X 10 equals 2x minus 10, add 10, so 20 equals 2x, and we get x equals 10 there. Now, there's two ways I can go about the second example. I can say that these angles are same side interior and use my notes to know that that means they're equal to 180, and I could set up 75 plus 3x equals 180. That's fine, that's option one, and we're gonna get to the same place we'd get to with the other option. Option two is if I, I know that this is 75, I can fill in all sorts of angles that would also be 75. Okay, we've played this game before. I know alternate and vertical, okay, and I can fill that in, and all the other angles in this diagram would be what? 105. And so I could play this game because I know one of the, once I know one angle, I know all of them there. And then I can say, okay, so 3x equals 105, which is what we're gonna get to here in a minute anyway. I'm gonna subtract 75 and get 3x equals 105, but there's just kind of two ways to get there. Know the angle relationship, so I set it up correctly, or fill in all of our missing angles and then match up what, what you have. And when I divide 105 by three, I get? 35. <clears throat> Whereas this one's different because it's still same side interior, but I don't have any angle measurements, so I can't like play this game. I have to know that same side interiors are equal to 180 and set it up. 6x plus 5x plus 15 equals 180. The one angle plus the other angle. Or 11x plus 15 equals 180 and 11x equals 165 divide by 11 and I have 15. Yeah, 15 works, okay. And we've done lots of those. So you have several examples of that in your um, pack it in different places. Okay, this should have said, given J is parallel to K and angle one is congruent to angle three. That was the given. And we wanted to prove that L is parallel to N. So we are given, and I'm just going to color code that J and K are parallel, and that one is congruent to three. And I want to prove that L and N 
are parallel. So um, the weird thing about this is they split the gibbons. So you can see the gibbons are here and here. So one and three lists the gibbons. So these are both reason for one and three are just that that's where my gibbons are listed. They kind of jumped ahead. That's because this part two relates to this given. So it's saying if J is parallel to K, and then let's read the reason. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. A little fancier than what we've been writing. It's really, I would have written this. If parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, same idea, just a little fancier wording. So J and K, so what angles are they talking about? There's two we could kind of use. Which one? You could use one and two. Yeah, one and two are corresponding. So I like that. Um, we could have also gone three and four over on this side. That would also work. So there's kind of two ways to get there because um, then it'll work this way either way. So that's why that's kind of put in between. If J is parallel to K, then my corresponding angles are congruent. So now I know one and two are congruent and I know one and three are congruent. And then it says transitive property. So if one and two are congruent and one and three are congruent, then two and three are congruent. Okay, now I'm at my last step, which means I must be saying L is parallel to N must be based on this, right? If I say two and three, now I can say L and N. Why, what are two and three? Yeah, so one and two are corresponding this way on the red lines that we knew were parallel. Two and three are corresponding on L and N. So that's why two and three lets us say L and N are parallel because if, corresponding, and that's why I need to know what angle relationship it is. That's the first part of my if then. If corresponding angles are congruent, then those lines must be parallel, okay? And yesterday in our notes, we made that little chart that gave us all our possible ways to write if thens. This is one of five possible ways I could say lines are parallel, okay? <clears throat> Okay, I need to know which ones I'm crossing off or something here. So I want to finish up. I think we've done, although you may not have been here every day. In terms of the warm up, we didn't finish one of them, um, which was the one we did yesterday. So if you could find this warm up again, but I want to cross off a bunch. So I'm going to give you a few to do and then I'll cross off a bunch before we get started on unit review. So on this one that said proving lines parallel and we wrote if thens over and over again. We're gonna do the same thing. Just stay on the second page, which looks like this. Okay, so lots more options and it's a little trickier. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a challenge because remember M and N could be parallel. Those are gonna be closer together, but M and P could also be parallel. Like I could have alternate angles one and 22 and that would tell me M and P are parallel because there's three lines going that direction. Okay, so it's a little bit of a challenge. I believe I looked at it, there was some I didn't like because um, it was stuff we didn't do this year. So I'm gonna do 12, 14, I can write it at the top too. So number, this might be help, more helpful. 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And let me just double check this one. And on the other column, 13 and 19. So this is like going down this side. The only one I need to cancel off is the last one. And then see on that row, just the bottom one I'm canceling off or that column I should say. So all my evens except 22. And then for odds, I'm only doing 13 and 19. Crossing off 15 and 17 crossing off 21 and 23, okay? So I'm gonna give you some time with this warm up, and I'll leave those numbers up here too. These are the ones we're doing. What lines then would be parallel and what's your if then statement, okay? All of our reasons should be if this, then that, okay?
Yes. That works well. So that makes M and N parallel because if same side, their exterior right are supplementary, then parallel. This is the tricky one. So you have to kind of, they want you to conclude which lines are parallel. So I'm not going, my conclusion is not going to be five and 18. But that would be if I if it was a proof and I had those givens, then I would say five is then congruent to 18 because of transitive property or substitution. Okay, but we're kind of side saying, okay, so we know this is true, if this is true, because they're both equal to 12. And five and 18 are the ones we want. <clears throat> because if I look at five and 18, now here you have to look at that gap in the middle. Five and 18, so five and 12, oops. That doesn't help me at all. Uh, 12 and 18 doesn't help me at all. But linking it together and saying 5 and 18, they are what type of angles? Alternate uh, interior angles around M and P. Do you see if I just like blank out that middle line? So my conclusion is that M and P are parallel because if alternate interior angles are congruent then parallel. Six and 22, I think also skip that middle line. Um, six and 22, going back up, would be here and here. What type of angle relationship do six and 22 have? Let me cover up that middle line. Corresponding, yep, one's in, one's out on the same side. So those are corresponding angles and again, Skipping line N puts M and P parallel. Okay, so this is M and P. And if corresponding angles are congruent, then parallel. Last one, um, number 19, four and 24. Again, skipping a line. So four and 24 supplementary tells me which two lines are parallel. Because they are great, you're all pros. Okay, so 19 again is going to be M and P because, oops, if same side exterior supplementary, then parallel. Okay, good. Gotten lots of practice with it. So now, what we are going to do, I think I have to, oh no, I don't have to print myself a new copy is we are going to complete our unit review so that I can answer any questions before you leave today. And then tomorrow, what are you doing? The quiz, which we'll post in classroom. Um, I mean, since it's open notes, I kind of feel like, should I print some and it will be easier because then you'll have the hard copy. I'll print some while you're working. Um, so on this, I don't love the proof in here and I feel like we've done enough proofs not like the one you'll see, you'll be okay. So don't do, don't even worry about the proof, okay? So with the time we have left, which what, 25 minutes or so, you're just looking at the, the solving problems and also just kind of testing relationships again, okay? This is just saying what relationship do they have? Doesn't have anything to do with parallel lines, just what type of angles are they? And then here you're saying what angle relationship is it and is are they congruent or supplementary? Okay. And then you're going into solving. So I will print some of those so you have them. I'm going to give you maybe 10, 12 minutes or so to work on your own. Um, and then we'll kind of go through it and be done. Let's just go through. Um, the bottom section there. So you see one through six. Now that bottom section is really only more challenging because you got to figure out what angles they're talking about. And it's um, instead of listing numbers, we have to go through and um, figure out where E, e, e K, L is. 
EKL is having an issue there, um, but it's here. And JLJ is here, making them what type of angles? Corresponding. And corresponding angles are congruent. So this is asking for two things. And make sure on the quiz you read and see what am I including? Am I just writing what the angle relationship is? Do I have to say um, what they are? Um, JLH is here. So on the other side, so JLH going this direction. Um, and ILG, ILG, what type of angle relationship do they have? Vertical, doesn't mean that those lines are parallel, but it doesn't ask for that. It just says, are they congruent or supplementary? And vertical angles are, are, are not, <laughs> are congruent. Linear pairs would be supplementary. Verticals would be equal to each other. I, IKF and GLJ are alternate exterior, which are congruent. EKL. Do you understand how I'm getting the angles? I'm not throwing you by just doing it. HLK. HLK, HLK, so right here. <laughs> Our alternate interior, alternate interior, which again, congruent. Um, J, K, F, so now we're gonna be on the other side. So really the letters are telling you what side you are on for this like K. So I'm either J, K, E or J, K, F I'm over here and KLH over here, what are they? Same side interior, and same side interiors are supplementary, yep. Yeah. JLH here, and JKF here, those are corresponding and congruent. I, L, H, so I down to L, H is gonna be here, and J, L, H, J, L, H is here. What, what do we call that relationship? Linear pair, and linear pairs are supplementary. And E, K, J, going this way, and G, L, K, going this way, would be same side interior. Same sides are supplementary, okay? So just really an additional, couple additional steps there than from the top one. You gotta figure out the angle and you gotta figure out what the relationship is. <clears throat> really here, you're doing the same thing. You gotta figure out the relationship and what it means, but then you have to solve. So what's the relationship? Corresponding, which is congruent, which means we set them equal to each other. And then we solve. And I have x equals eight, just kind of skipping. Okay, we go through and solve, and I have x equals eight there. <clears throat> I'll put the full key in too, so you have it. Now on two, this one's interesting because it gives me two variables. This is right here, by the way, okay? So I have to start, first of all, I have to start with the two angles that have the same variable. So I can't put Y and X together in an equation. I wouldn't be able to solve it. So I have to start here, which what's the relationship here? Yep, so I go, okay, those are same side interior, which are supplementary. So I'm gonna have X plus 67, plus x plus 127 equals 180. And then I get combining like terms, two x's and 194 equals 180. Okay, so I'm just combining like terms over there, 67 and 127. So then I get a negative for my variable, that's okay. So two x equals negative 14 and x equals negative seven. Okay, so there's x, x equals negative seven. 
where you need to be a little like tricky, really understand what's happening is here. So now I need to solve for Y. There's a few ways that I could do it. I could plug X in and get like the actual angles for the other two angles and then work from there. Or I can set up an equation. What's true here? They're supplementary. So I know this is a linear pair. So I know that three Y plus seven plus X plus 127 equals 180. And I know that X is negative seven. Okay, so another option is set up the equation and then substitute in. Now we know what X is and what happens there? Seven and negative seven is just gonna cancel out. So then I'm going to subtract 127. I think I do too. Yes. 53 thirds. Is that what you had? Yeah, I didn't think I was doing it right. Because yeah, it's a weird I answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what I have too. Weird answer, 53 thirds. Or, um, or 0.3 as a decimal. Okay, so now flip this over, two more solving. Are we setting these angles equal to each other or equal to 180 on number three? Equal to each other. They are um, alternate exterior. So they are congruent. 10X minus five equals 9X plus three. And, and if you did the checkout, I've given you um, feedback on that by now and it sent you the answer key. So you had these in there, you should check that out. You get to X equals eight on that one. I'm not going through all the steps, but that's where you land. And on four, are they equal or equal to 180? Equal, they're alternate interior, which makes them congruent. So I'd have 19X minus one is equal to 18X plus five. And solving, I got X equals six. Okay. So, so just be careful. I will say on unit two, where lots of points were lost was angle relationships where you just set everything equal to each other. Okay, instead of thinking about, well, is it actually equal to 180 or on that test, it could have been equal to 90 as well. Okay, so just take a moment and think about what's true and make sure you set up the equation correctly. Okay, we have about six minutes, not a ton of time. Um, you could use this time to get, make sure all your homework is submitted for this unit. You, you have now 18 that you can submit. Um, you could start your quest if you wanted to while it's fresh. The top part won't take you very long. Um, and then just know we're not meeting tomorrow because I'll be in conferences again.